it's starting your day. <laughs> or finishing it. Or walking in it. Or going about your day. But today, it's a good day. Because every day that you have to give thanks, that you can take a deep breath, that you can feel as though God is working both to do and to will of His good pleasure, then I would say that's a good day. Today, study daily, practice and cultivate and meditate upon these duties. Throw yourself wholly into them as your ministry, so that your progress may be evident to everyone. 1 Timothy 4.15 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. It is difficult to grow if you don't like to read the word. If Satan has created obstacles to keep you from reading the word, take authority over it. Declare your love for the word and then read it, even if only a couple of pages a day. Your desire for more will quickly increase. If you truly don't like to read, then pray that God will give you a brand new desire to do so right now. You know, one of the things that I like that being in technology is that when you program a computer to do, that's what it does. It's not like the computer itself has a mind of its own and it acts according to what it wants to do, although sometimes people think so because of whatever issues they may have with them. But your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit is likewise so programmed is that it has within it a need that God can fulfill. And what God has done is that he's placed within you the ability to choose whatsoever you will to program your own life with. You can program television. You can program sensuality through music and through things that appeal to your flesh that make you feel good. <laughs> and all of those are, in reality, a part of what we take in in our life because we have the ability to see, we have the ability to hear, we have the ability to understand, we have certain wants and needs that we look in psychology or sociology or anything that observes the human being and says, this is how God created us, so this is what we need to put into our life. And so those sciences aren't necessarily bad, it's just where they start from and where they go to that describe whether or not that learning process is good. So what we've learned through the years is that practical application. We've seen how people who study the Word of God, who read it daily, who apply it by just thinking, hmm, and wind up having a more profitable, a more enjoyable, a more peaceful, a more loving, a more knowledge of God life that they seem to have something that other people don't have. Now, I can tell you that not everyone that reads the Bible is going to appear that way. Not everyone that takes the time or makes the time to read the Bible is going to feel the same way. But I can tell you this, God promised that nothing written in his word in the Bible itself, that if you read it, would not be accomplished in your life according to what he wants to do in your life. So, if you really want to know what the will of God is, if you really want to find out for yourself and prove it, <laughs> the simplest way is just read it. Read the Bible. You know, the more, like it says, the more you read, the more you will. The more you will, the more you want to. The more you want to, the more you will. <laughs> I know for myself, I'm totally impressed with my wife is that every day she reads a portion of the Bible. When she first started reading, she read straight through the Bible. And I think she still does. I don't ask her regularly, although I did first year that she did. And she did. She read straight through. I'm not going to say she knew everything she read or that she understood it all, but she read straight through. Now she's reading through again. And for myself, I know at times that I have skipped reading and there are times where I've gone, 
days without reading it and wondered, you know, what's going on? You know, I don't understand. But when you fail or you have set some major goal, like you think you have to read a scripture a day or you have to read a chapter a day or you've got some reading plan you have to check off along the way, don't worry. Don't fret. Because God understands your heart. And when he wanted me to be filled with his word, I thrived on reading what it was and always saw how God spoke to me personally in each and every passage that I read. And so when he gave me emotional and devotionals and still had me reading the Bible, I had a balance. I had a division that I could say, this is my time to read, this is my time for devotion, this is my time for prayer, and it was wonderful. But there's also a time where you just go with the flow, is that sometime in my day, I read a portion of scripture. Sometime in my day, I think about what God has said in his word. Sometime in my day, I always dwell on it in my mind that, you know, Lord, that just bugs me what you said about that. You know, what, what does it mean? And so for me, that's what it's about, is that it's not just simply a read anymore, but it's like, let it richly dwell in you. Think about what you're reading sometimes. Think about what God is saying to you and then also what it means. I mean, you know, why read something when you don't understand it? Bluntly. But even if you don't, God has promised in his word that nothing that proceeds out of his mouth, which we believe that the Bible is spoken by God. It's obviously had to have been because it was spoken to those who inscribed it into a book and collected the entire works of it and then when you look at it it all fits perfectly together and there's no way that those writers could have sat down and penned this authorship unless someone outside of our time domain had inspired them to be able to write down all that occurred in it ahead of what was going to happen and then also be so accurate that it would happen exactly the way they said it because no person could have sat down and made it happen that way except that there be God <laughs> which is why when you want to know what God has to say you can always go to the Word of God when you want to know what Jesus is or who he is you can always go to the Word of God Whenever you have a doubt as to what is true, you can always go to the Word of God. And that's why we're told every day to read it. That's why we're told to think about it. That's why everyone I know shares with anyone that doesn't do it. They should understand that if they don't, then really what you're doing is you're going, hey, you know, I think I'll watch the news and, and maybe that'll tell me the truth. And we all know that if you watch enough news, you'll get depressed. We know that if you watch a good love story, you're going to get happy and sad and it's going to sway you in different emotions. And have you ever seen how sometimes when you're watching a really violent movie that when you get done with it, you're either, yeah, all right, let's go for it. Or you're, oh, I'm mad now. I want to go out and hit somebody. Well, those are things that are called programming. And I personally prefer that we would choose to program our minds to study to show ourselves approved as God said a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed as the Bible says but that we would be able to discern what is programming us in a negative way as opposed to what would be a positive way to know who Jesus is because I don't see him as most people portray him out to be people say that if you teach that he's love, peace, and joy that he's somehow a wimp or that he's not as powerful because he doesn't choose to exercise his power. And I see Jesus as when he comes back in the Valley of Megiddo and destroys all the armies of the world saying one word, peace, boom, they're all wiped out. So today, as we're told in the word, as confused as sometimes it seems you can always know that there's peace, love, and joy. Just waiting for you. Not just in a devotional that you might read, but in your emotions if you study or if you read the Word of God daily. Because it's pretty simple. All you got to do, again, just like today's been saying all day long, just do it. And if it don't work, then don't.
But the one thing I'd like to share with you today is read it. That's all. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying one word. Read. Just do it. <laughs> if that's what God wants for you today, just do it. Read it. That's all you got to do. And all the rest, Jesus takes care of the rest.